All right, and welcome everybody and welcome to the show. My name is Chris Allen. I am a home brewer. It's one of my great enthusiasts. Uh, I mean, I am a, I mean, a huge proponent of it. I've been doing it for quite some time. And uh, here tonight, I've got with me the man that taught me everything about home brewing and the guy that actually owns his own shop and can talk your ear off trying to explain everything that goes in the shop. I've got the owner of HBYOB, Joey Brumley. How are you doing tonight, man? I'm doing very well. How are you, Chris? I can't complain too much. Now, uh, Joey and I, we've known each other for, gosh, well over a decade at this point now, I would have to say. Close to it. Close yeah. to it. Uh, but I got a text from Joey uh, just a couple of days ago. Uh, it was a link to a news article uh, from Dayton.com, and I'm looking at it right now by by some guy by the name of Mark Fisher. It says, local home brew shop seeks actual craft brewery license to up its game. So, I mean, talk, talk to me about that, man. So when I first opened the store from the very first day I said I want to open up a homebrew store, I always said that I wanted people to try samples. I thought that would be the best way for people to get into the hobby if they were a little apprehensive of potentially getting started. Yeah. Um, I felt like if you could try samples, um, that would be a great start. Well, when I got into it, I talked to an attorney, and we ran into quite a bit of red tape right out of the gate. Mm -hmm. So we found, through enough research, we basically found that we had to be deemed as a brewery, um, get a manufacturing permit to be able to try samples, because in, in the state of Ohio, you cannot, you can never give away alcohol, and you obviously can't sell untaxed alcohol. So sure. that was kind of where that ran in. We, we ran into that. So that was always my intentions was, you know, when I opened the homebrew store, Hey, we're going to, we're going to give samples. We want people to pick up kits and so forth and so on. But it just unfortunately wasn't really feasible at the time. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. So, so, I mean, so why was that different so much different than, cause I know you were doing a uh, carry out for a while. So how is that different than doing a brewery? Cause you're still giving, like you're still selling alcohol at that point, right? Correct, but uh, the biggest difference is with the carryout. You know, we're not actually serving it in house. Okay. Um, so once again, even with the permit that I still currently have, technically speak, or I shouldn't even say technically speaking, the law states that we can't crack that beer open and sample it there in the store. Gotcha. Um, okay. Now there there are add-ons to my current uh, license that I could have got, but I mm -hmm. felt after we so like I said, we went probably two years. And then I decided, and, and I, I remember discussing with you many, many times, you know, do I get a brewery license? You know, oh, I don't yeah. want to, you know, I don't want to be a brewery. I really don't. That's not my intentions. I want to be a home brew store. I love the hobby. I just don't want to tackle the brewery thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, you know, th for me, it was always just like catch 22. Like I got to get a brewery permit to let people try samples. It just seems strange to me. Yeah. Because um, yeah. I didn't want to be labeled as a brewery. I wanted to be a home, a home brew store. So eventually I was just like, well, maybe a good way for people to get into the hobby would be, you know, if they can pick up a six pack of, you know, whatever is popular then. If they're not home brewers, maybe, you know, I can say, hey, if you'd like to brew something similar to this, we can come up with recipes. Yeah. So I kind of went that route. I, I didn't kind of. I went that route and thinking, mm -hmm. you know, that would be a good fit. Yeah. We did that for about six months. And honestly, just my current customers are purchasing the beer. You know, I'm not getting anyone into home brewing. So for me, it's just kind of, you know, I wanted to just go back to being a home brew store exclusively mm -hmm. and not even really mess with the carry out aspect of it. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, you know, after I thought, you know, long and hard about it, I finally just said, you know what, since the day, the day I even conceived the idea of opening a homebrew store, I always said, you know what, I want I want people to try samples. I want yeah. people to be able to come in and say, hey, um, you know, what's homebrew tastes like? You know, you get that kind of stigma that sometimes home homebrewed beer or wine or anything can get, and just be able to say, hey, you know, you what do you think of this? I brewed yeah. it on that using this, using that. Um, I also thought that you know being able to try samples of recipes that we have would be a fantastic fit. Mm -hmm. And so I finally just said, you know what? Um, uh -oh. If, yeah, no. <laughs> I know. Hopefully, um, we can hear each other. I can hear you too. So, <laughs> okay. Um, someone out there, let me know if anyone else is having I issues with audio. Okay. Uh, I think I think on Facebook, uh, Ryan, if you at the bottom, you can click the little uh, 
Um, there's like a little uh, microphone button. Sometimes it just stays muted by default. Hopefully that helps oh, yeah. out. I just, I popped it. Yeah. I just toggled it real quick and then I could actually hear it. Cause it's on like maybe a 30 second delay or maybe something like that on the actual Facebook okay. site. So I think that hopefully that's it. If you just click the mute button or whatever. Okay. So uh, anyway, so I finally just said, you know what? It's, it's since the day I opened up the store, this is what I've always wanted to do. And I'm a big person who believes, you know, when you see some, like when I envision something, unfortunately my head just can't twist around it any other way till eventually. Uh, thanks Thomas. Um, until like food, right? I mean, if you see uh, for me, at least if I, I mean, I don't know if this is the same for you, but I like watching a bunch of like different like cooking shows and like eating shows and like in all that on like, Netflix or whatever. But anytime I see or anytime I watch one of those shows, I want to cook the same thing. I want to make it. I want to actually taste Absolutely. it. I, I want to have that thing that I'm watching somebody else eat because it looks good. And it's the same thing yeah. with beer. I mean, I know you and I have had a number of conversations where we'll sample each other's beer or we'll have somebody else's beer or whatever. And it's just like, especially when we were both like kind of starting out, it was like, okay, well, it kind of just, it still has that, for lack of a better term, that home brewery taste to it. And just mm -hmm. trying to identify, okay, what is what separates, you know, homebrew mm -hmm. from, you know, the actual like craft, like something you get from a brewery. And just after refining technique and learning more, we've kind of figured that out. But I think for people that are just getting into it, they wouldn't know that. So yeah. if you were, if they were to come into a store and just if you, if they even had the ability to, I don't know, bring a bottle in and just say, hey, I mean, I, I brewed this. What do you think? Yeah. You know, or if you if you brewed something, hey, I, I brewed a similar batch. I've got something right here. How about you try this? I think that would be I think it engages you know, with the people that are wanting to get into it. And it almost gives them a like a real time feedback in terms of where they're at, like what what adjustments they might need to make. And it just kind of helps them. And, to, and instead of just saying, well, yeah, just buy this kit or go get this, you know, bottle of this over there. Or how about you try more hops the next time? It's just that, you know, you can have that conversation like right then and there and try and mm -hmm. figure out, you know, you can do like almost like, in, again, in real time, like troubleshooting. Exactly. I mean, it it's taken me, you know, that's actually one cool thing is next month, it'll be three years since the store has been open. So that's, yeah, that's really exciting to have that anniversary uh, coming up. For sure. Um, you know, like I said, for me, honestly, it was, I didn't do anything about, you know, people trying samples because there wasn't really a whole lot I could do. Um, so then I started getting carry out. But then even then, it's just like most of those beers I have in the store, they don't even tell you what hops and malts and things are in there. So, I mean, I could take an educated guess. And I, I do pride myself of being fairly decent at it. But at the, mm -hmm. at the same at the same point in time, I'm shooting at the hip yeah. um, for the most part. Now, there are some beers that tell you. Um, and you can so find for me, recipes for a lot of them. Yeah. So, I mean, for me, it was like one of those things where, um, like I said, I finally just decided, you know what, let's just do it. Um, the time's now. And if we run into some issues, um, no big deal. I mean, we're still, we're, we're going to be a homebrew store first and foremost. So, you know, if we run yeah. into some hiccups or we run into some hurdles, you know, it's not like something I'm, you know, going to go absolutely berserk if, you know, it, it, it stalls a week or here, a week there. Um, it's not going to be the end of time for me because, like I said, I'm. We're really, and and that was another thing is like you know I, I think the guy who wrote the news article basically made the comment of you know something 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 warped wing. Don't worry, homebrew your own beer isn't you know trying to take up your shelf space or something along those lines. And uh, okay. you know yeah, like you're, I, I understand you're that you're making a good guys. news a, a good uh, news article headline, you know, and yeah. you get to tag warped wing and. And whatnot, you but have uh, click rate, bro. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> click on that article. Well, someone someone came in the store today and was like, "Oh, I read your article, you know." And uh, I said, "Yeah, we're really going to compete against Warped Wing." I said, "I'm going to need like five gallons at a time. I'm going to need about like one to two million employees. So if anyone's looking for a job, right? Uh, yeah, you know, because all of, like I said, my biggest thing is everything that we brew is going to be. I want people who are getting into the hobby say, "This is what I used." These are the mm -hmm. ingredients that are used here. Hey, if you like this beer, every single recipe we have on tap, um, it's going to be available for purchase in the store, you know, mm -hmm. so you can brew, you can brew that identical beer at home. 
even if you brewed that beer and you get slightly different results, it'd be great to have good conversation like water oh, yeah. chemistry. Did you first wort hop? It, you know, just so many different variables that could change a beer. Yeah. Um, so like I said, it, it creates a good dialogue. I mean, another thing that we are looking into is, you know, all the, like we were just at uh, Aloween. We are pours at Aloween. So we can go there and be one of the first people that says, you know, hey, we're, we're a home brew store that's here in this craft, you know, beer uh, atmosphere, but we want you to be the next brewery, you know, because mm -hmm. like I said, I don't, I've never had aspirations of being a brewer. I just really haven't. It's not, uh, it's not for me, mm -hmm. but at the same point in time to be able to go to those types of events. And if someone wants to have visions of having their own brewery one day, it's like, this is step one, you know, come yeah. into the store. If, if, if you don't mind, I'd love to help you out in any way I can get you into it. And when it comes to all that, I'm a pretty open book. I mean, like I said, I'm not, I'm not there to compete against any of those people. Like I said, I just want to be the guy that gets you started because every big brewery at some point, every story starts with, Hey, me and my buddies were home brewing and we brewed this amazing beer. We thought, mm -hmm. Hey, let's, let's turn into a brewery. I mean, that's yeah. every story. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I mean, and for you and the way, the way that you're laying it out, it really is about, quality over quantity like you'd rather sit down and discuss okay well how did you brew this you know what happened did you use this technique did you do this or whatever then trying to just pump out you know batch after batch after batch and trying to i guess again essentially i mean turn yourself into a brewery like trying to compete with the warped wings the toxics i mean like all of those other breweries you, you really are about trying to understand and like to show new people getting into the hobby or even folks that are that are into it and try and i guess again engage with them i guess uh have that deeper conversation about okay well what is it that we're actually doing in order to create whatever flavor that we've got i mean is, is that what am i understanding that correctly oh yeah yeah absolutely i mean for me there's not a better way to someone come in and go hey you know i i want to like every day i want to brew an ipa Mm -hmm. um, okay. Hey, you like, give this a try. Ooh, mm -hmm. that's way too citrusy. Okay. So you want something more piney or you want some, you know, um, yeah, you know, so, uh, you know, that those type of things and to be able to go back and forth and have that dialogue and be able to try beers, you know, you know the downfall is I'm not going to have seven different examples of an IPA for you to try. Um, exactly, but yeah. I can definitely troubleshoot. We can troubleshoot a lot quicker to getting, you, you know, if you go home, you're brewing five gallons, which is what I would say nine out of 10 home brewers are doing right now. That's sure. still two cases of beer. Mm -hmm. So last thing I want to do is send you home with something that's a citrusy, you know, uh, New England style IPA. And you're like, ah, that's not what I wanted at all. Yeah. You were um, looking for something like a Sierra. I mean, that's a pale ale, but still you're looking for something sure. a bit more earthy or whatever. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and yeah, don't get me wrong, just do conversation, but yeah. I mean, even I'm not the greatest descriptor of like things that I pick up. You know, I can sense like I'm not a beer judge, um, but I can sense all flavors and I can give suggestions of what I could have. But knowing that it by name, by definition, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not that that's where I'm still a little, you know, not the greatest as far as my knowledge base goes. Um, so I just feel having that community, having that sense, I mean, would would be very beneficial. No, I think that's uh, I think that'd be the best way. And I think you just hit the nail on the head right there, because I, of course, I mean, uh, we go to we have our meetings with like brew clubs. We go to some of these like larger events like you were just talking about Halloween. Uh, we did the uh, uh, we did the the brew competition like back in August. Mm -hmm. uh, some other folks from the uh, from the brew club, they did the the one up at the what is it? The Columbus Fair or whatever, like uh, yeah. over the summertime. I mean, so, I mean, we go to these events where all of us can kind of congregate or whatever, but they, but they come so few and far in between. I mean, these are like large events, but if you could have just that, that place where maybe five, six or seven of us can congregate almost like on a daily basis to discuss, I mean, just like trying to dig into the science and like, again, in real time troubleshooting. I mean, that's, that's a different experience than going to a competition or going to a meeting or, you know, or going to some sort of like craft brew event in the evening time where you just want to kind of just let your hair out and just have a few drinks or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, it's just a completely different experience where you can grow that larger community. Just like you did, like, just like you mentioned. Yeah. I mean, 
it it is for me it's really exciting because it also by getting by getting the craft brewery i think he worded a craft brewery license it's technically a manufacturing license but yeah um you know the there it opens up a lot of other doors for us i mean for the first time ever i can truly say you know what if you want to come in you know sunday or monday Mm -hmm. you can come in from start to finish i'll show you how to brew a batch of beer we'll ferment it here we'll bottle it up here you can take it home and i'll do all the you know we'll do all the work together Mm -hmm. and from start to finish you can leave with a finished product without even having a, a recipe or without even purchasing your first ingredient and uh equipment kit yeah to be able to do that to me is pretty exciting as well to to be a hundred percent uh transparent it's not my immediate goal um mm-hmm. it's something i can give people as an option but it's not like i'm gonna set up a formal classroom in the back right out of the gate but it does open up the door to be able to do that oh yeah and i think well uh, we discussed we, that before yeah because we both went over to eudora where they have those classes and i mean that's more of a you know, like an event, right? Where yeah. you've got yeah. 10, 15 people, like that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Where for you, I mean, while it could be that if, mm-hmm. if people really wanted to turn it into that, but you're talking about one-on-one, like, hey, okay, yeah. well, step one, let's make sure, okay, so everything's sanitized. Step two, yeah. all right, let's get our let's get our strike water temperature up to this. Step three, I mean, and just kind of, again, process, process, process. So for folks that are that somebody might come in and say, Hey, my, my efficiency, it, it sucks. Like I'm, yeah. I'm barely getting above 55%. I mean, what, what am I doing wrong? Okay. Well, mm-hmm. let's, let's step through it. I mean, let's, yeah. let's see, like, what are you doing? Like, are, have you done this? Have you done that? Whereas a lot of times, and I know you've probably had a, like a ton of questions in the store where folks have come in complaining about efficiency or asking mm-hmm. about efficiency mm-hmm. and you can talk their ear off and try and explain to them all sure. day long how you can improve it and what the things that you can try, yeah. but they still have to one, remember it. Cause they're probably not taking notes Two, go home and try it and try the thing that you talked to them about two, three days later. And they probably forgot you know, half of what you told them. And then they're just going to wind up in that same cycle of, you know, Oh, it's, you know, maybe it's mm-hmm. 56%, maybe it's 60% or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, but with what you're describing, you can do it right then. You can just kind of walk yeah. them through it. If they want to take, you know, take notes, they can kind of watch, like watch the entire process. I mean, that opens up a whole new, I mean, avenue to, hey, let's let's start videotaping this whole thing. Mm-hmm. You know, well, you, you know, that's that's ultimately the thing for me is, um, you know, Eudora does a great job doing what they do, and I know a lot of people who go there have a blast, and I have, they leave from there and they'll come here and say. Um, a lot of people say, Hey, they, you know, they recommended me to come to you guys and, uh, Mm -hmm. to actually get started so I can do this at home. I want to treat it more as Eudora is a fun experience and they have a cool atmosphere and everything for that. Yeah. And that's great. And where I'm going to eventually do that, but just slightly different. I want to be more of like a classroom style setting to where maybe if you're just getting started, but it, it's going to be more, and, and I'm not saying uh, you don't learn anything from Eudora, but what I'm saying, much more of an informational style format to where it's yeah, like I'll people who are, one. yeah, where people really want to get in the nuts, who, who, who want to do it, really want to get in the nuts and bolts of it very quickly instead of, you know, hey, I went, I brewed, we drank beer and played Xbox while, the, you know, the people yeah, there brewed yeah. beer and we I'm had like a whole lot of fun. Experience. It's a fun it, experience. It, it, I mean, we talked about going to do it, shoot not even probably a couple of years ago. I mean, yeah. so, I mean, for a fun experience, hell yeah. I mean, why not? Uh, but like I said, for me, I want to trade it more of kind of like a train, you know, like more of like a learning type of atmosphere to where we don't have the, you know, the annoyance of legality keeping us from being able to do everything from start to finish where I'm going like, Hey, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. So, mm-hmm but don't do this, go home and sprinkle this. It, yeah, it just, yeah. to me, it was like this big mess of uh, legality to where, you know, I'm still not an attorney, but you know, the, the, basically when I consulted an attorney, it was just like one of those things like, don't do that. You know, I understand certain people do s- certain things, but you know, you don't want to do this. You don't want to do that. And it was just like, like I said, all this red tape I was coming across. And sure. finally, like I said, I think it was maybe two months ago where I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go for it. And Mm -hmm. I filed for it and didn't think much of it. I filed for it pretty quietly. Like, I don't think I told really virtually anyone. And, um, then, like I said, next thing you know, I've got 
someone from Dayton Daily News <laughs> emailing <laughs> saying, oh, uh, we see that you filed for this. We want to do a news story. Wow. And so, uh, you know, all of a sudden, you know, now it's just like, oh, crap, you know, th- this is a real thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but like I said, I, I'm still not changing. You know, we're still and always going to be a uh, homebrew store first. And uh, like I said, I, if with if with all y'all support, you know, I would love to be to where, you know, if you go to your local pub and say, hey, we want HBYOBs, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever on tap. I would love to love to accommodate that and make sure that that happens. But like I said, ultimately, um, that's thinking, you know, uh, the sky is the limit kind of thought process. But ultimately, I just want to stay grounded and, and do originally what I set out when I opened the store. And that was try samples, share recipes and 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 teach people how to homebrew good beer um hopefully and and hopefully i do a good job at those oh well hey i mean so far i think you've done an excellent job at doing all of those and uh we'll have to talk a little bit about it more later but uh if you are looking to get somewhere on tap i got i got a line on on a a way that you can get that done so we'll we'll talk about that but (laughs) either way i mean i think that's that's essentially i mean that's that's how you build a community I, i keep going back to that because you you hit it the nail right on the head with what you can do with having a brewery set up the way that you want to do it. I mean, being able to, again, talk with people, work with people one-on-one classes. I mean, and this is like legitimate classes, Like mm-hmm. this is, mm-hmm. this is what, this is how you're supposed to do it. So yeah. if efficiency is your problem, this is how yeah. you're supposed to do it. Yeah. If you're trying to, I don't know if, if, um, Let's say if you want to try and build that IPA that you've been really looking for. Okay, well, this is maybe like the the hop combination that you would want to use, mm-hmm. or maybe even just have a class like just on you know different hop variants and trying to find out. Okay, well, this is what alpha acids means, and this is what it, you know. This is how you can wind up using it and like utilizing the alpha acids and things of that nature. So it's just however far down the rabbit hole that folks want to go you'll now have the ability to, again, in real time, show them, okay, well, here's a, here's a beer with, you know, 150 IBUs and here's one with just 50 IBUs and, you know, here's the difference. So Mm -hmm. what do you like? And so it actually, that's probably another common question that you probably get in the store quite a bit is when folks come in new to the hobby and it's just like, okay, well, what kind of kit should I get? Okay. Well, what kind of beer do you like? Mm -hmm. Okay. Would you like one that tastes like, and you can give them a sample. Mm-hmm. Hey, th- does this taste good to you, or does that taste good to you? Do you like ales? Do you like ambers? Like, what do you like? And it's like, oh, uh, you know, I'm probably, sh- I'm sure that folks' default answer is, well, you know, I kind of like Bud Light, and then maybe some other stuff on the side. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, you get the common answers, but now you can give mm-hmm. them something, and they're like, okay, I really do like this, so let's go from there. Yeah, I mean, and, and ultimately, like I said, for me, it, it really is building a community of people who it share homebrewing like you know next year when we do our uh uh homebrew competition if mm-hmm. you like if you want to share your recipe not only can you put it on tap there at the store uh you know you can have your kit featured in the store i mean there's so many so. cool there's yeah. so many cool things that we can do with it for sure like i said honestly the the, the way i look at the whole experience of what I'm trying to accomplish is first off what I said from day one, when I decided to open the store, finishing that chapter. Um, but, the, but also just closing the bridge of, you know what? I get to share my beer, mm-hmm. but to be, to do that, like I said, because I have a store and we're not just coming to my house. Right. This is this is the means that I have to, you know, do to protect, you know, my business and, um, you know, do things legitimately the, the correct way. So, yeah. but like I said, ultimately, you know, my biggest thing is, you know, don't don't worry. Warped wing. <laughs> um, <laughs> but if 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 all y'all, uh, you know, support support uh, me and and. I, I would lo- I would love and be honored if everybody in there everybody you know locally wants to get a, a beer on tap I'll make sure I accommodate it and that would be a cool experience to scale things up uh, other than five gallons because trust me if, if a lot of people are demanding uh, say someone who wins the homebrew competition and you know next thing you know I've got three places wanting me to put it on tap you know we're gonna have to do more than a, a five gallon batch setup like I said all problems I would love to have but like I said honestly that's just not where my head's at with it right now um, yeah. it would be great but that's not where my head's at 
No, just it's just about getting started. It's about yeah. just creating, you know, creating the environment, setting setting everything up like with I mean with some room to grow, I mean for sure, but just being able to get started, start bringing in folks, having them learn about the craft and then and then kind of just I can I, like for me and this is I'm mean, I'm an eternal optimist when it comes to stuff like this, but there's just no way that I can see this going, I guess, badly. Because again, I mean, as for as popular as the hobby is, and just as how, and again, how much help that you could provide folks, like just right there on the spot, I'm I'm struggling to, I, I can't put, I can't poke holes in it. I mean, yeah. it's just easy for me to, I, well, I mean, I if I get off work or I, I don't feel like being at work, I wind up mosing, you know, I'll ride on down 675 to hang out with you for a couple of hours anyway. Yeah. So now you're going to tell me that there might actually be some alcohol involved, like on premises. <laughs> okay, fine. I mean, what's, what's the downside? Legitimately. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what's the downside here at this point? I'm, I'm struggling to see how folks wouldn't find a way to just, oh yeah. So I'll just go, you know, I'll go head over to HBYOB and go hang out for, you know, half hour, 45 minutes, maybe learn a couple of things and maybe have a beer or two. You know, well, plus, like plus we'll be able to answer the easy the, uh, question I get every week. What's the easiest way to homebrew? I can just turn around and say, uh, try that, 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 that. And I can fill you a growler and that'd be the go. easiest way you can, uh, you can uh, homebrew. Yeah. Wow. And if you like any of those, I've got a kit for that over here. You can buy <laughs> the equipment like over there. I mean, it's just, yeah, it's just, it's an easy sell from, from my perspective. And again, I mean, just from, I'd, I'd say from a advanced standpoint, so for the folks that have been doing it five, 10, 15 years, however long, I think it'd be a great place for them to come. And I mean, because I would think that the folks that are really into brewing and have done it for a while, that'd be a place that they would want to congregate because they would want to show off yeah. some of their knowledge to folks that are new to it and might want to ask questions. And of course, for the folks that are like kind of new to it and getting into it, that's a place where they can learn. That's a place where they can find out, you know, and get that help that they need in order to take, you know, that hobby to the next level. Or even if it's not taking it to the next level, it's just figuring out, okay, well, where can I improve at? Why am I getting back to the efficiency conversation? Like, why is my efficiency so low? Why why am I producing some of these yeah. off tastes? Like, what what is going on with this? Like, do I need to change my... Uh, you know, fermenting temperature, I mean, any of those things. Yeah. With so many variables that come into play when it comes to brewing, I mean, there's just so many aspects to it that we have to keep in mind. And we just might not, be, especially for new folks, they just might not have a handle on everything. Even if they have, because like, you know how, uh, what was it, Northern Brewer that sends out, you know, that step-by-step -step list, like with their recipes of all the things that you're supposed to do. But you don't remember to do all of those things because yeah. you got, you know, stuff on fire and, you know, yeah. hot water well, going everywhere and all that. Well, not to mention that, you know, even like the Brewer's Best kits that we sell, a lot of people call me up and say, well, a lot of this, a lot of this verbiage is contradictory. Mm -hmm. Most like, yeah, and it, for me, it's like, no, it's not. But when you're new to home brewing, it's like, wait a minute, secondary, not secondary, rehydrate right, my yeah. yeast, not rehydrate my yeast. Like, well, the directions say not to rehydrate it, but I look at the yeast pack and it says to rehydrate. You know, it's like right. all these just like little itty bitty variables versus me brewing for years. Like hydrate it if you want, don't hydrate it. I don't, I think yeah. it's a waste of time, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh, so I, so I mean, like, and, and I, we, we had this conversation before, you know, I give people the difference of like, uh, here's what the books will say. And here's what my honest opinion or here's what my opinion is. Doesn't make me right. and doesn't make you know them wrong. It doesn't make them right. It make me wrong. Um, but, you know, those type of things. And like I said, being able to open that dialogue. But like ultimately for me, like I think the coolest thing about all this and back to me being a homebrew store first, you know, I can't tell you how many people have aspirations to to open a brewery of their own. And that's fantastic. And to be able to truly just close the gap because like I said, I'm an open book with those type of things. Like mm -hmm. you can do it. If you want to do it, you can do it. Like, and I will help you every, I, I do, I do business with breweries all the time. Like, you know, we're not doing, or the, I shouldn't say we, we, you know, you know, they're not doing anything mysterious. You know, you can do it yourself. Like, and I'd be glad to help you. I can think of like a couple breweries that are up and coming. We've had great conversations and, I'd love to be involved to help you out and, and, and fulfill your dream. You know, my dream wasn't to be a brewery, but if yours is, I would love to help you fulfill your dream. And like I said, once I go through the whole process, that's even one more step of education that I got to go through to help you. You know, mm -hmm. hey, I ran into this hiccup. I ran into that hiccup, you know, so forth and so on. You know, I can already tell you right now, if you want to become a brewery 
and you get on, um, you know, the Ohio, I forget, the, I don't forget the website, but you know, you get on there, they're going to say, here's the application, here's the application fee, and here's how, how much it is, you know, annually. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, right, shoot two checks before you even put them in the mail because <laughs> they're not even going to touch the paperwork until you give them the annual fee. Now, their oh. verbiage rights, you know, uh, it's a hundred dollar application fee, you know, so forth and so on. Yeah. And I'm telling you right now, because I'm already I, back to I've went through the process, I've learned it. Put both checks in the mail right now because mm. the first letter you're going to get is we're not touching your paperwork until you give us this other check. So uh, you know, you know, just save your. It's back to like if you want to open a brewery and you want to do one now, I I can help you out with that and let me so learn you know, through the through all the tripping and you know tripping and hassle I went through and stumbling along the way to. to to expedite your process you know yeah. if you're all gung-ho of doing it let me help you ex expedite that process and so you know to be able to do that's going to be amazing yeah without a doubt and we got a question down in the chat for, uh, from mike he said i guess the question is when does it become an art versus just following a recipe so i'll, I'll let you go first so i'm a little weird in the sense of i do both i typically find a recipe and now I've been brewing for years. I tweak it to my taste buds. Mm -hmm. So the other day I wanted to do a Czech lager. And uh, so I went on the internet, went, consulted some books, and used that as inspiration. So I call that version one. Yeah. I've now got an NEIPA that's on version like 8 million at this point, it seems like. It's now not even close to the original recipe I did. It's 100% my own creation. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And, but I found it's, it's no different than any musician. They will always say my inspiration came from Eric Clapton or Jimi Hendrix or sure. you know, Elvis Presley. Everyone has their inspiration. So I guess my way, if I'm even answering the question would be for it to be art, you've got to find inspiration somewhere. So find a recipe from a, a book. Uh, I, I, there's one that I use, I have in the store all the time to help people out. Um, but then take that and take what you've already learned to make it your own. So, sure. you know, you, to be art in home brewing and formulating your own recipe, you don't really need to reinvent the wheel. There's base guidelines. And so you're going to see a lot of simil similarities in recipes. I would say just to piggyback off of that is that to me, I look at like a recipe, a recipe is just a list of instructions, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just uh, where you have, you may or may not have any knowledge of the the reasons why you're, I don't know, uh, getting your water temperature to 155 or 152 yeah. or why you're putting in your hops at 45 minutes versus 25 minutes or at flame out or what even a whirlpool is or any yeah. of those things. Like a recipe is just a list of instructions and you're just executing it. Anybody can do that. Art, art has a little bit more of a feel to it. So like while, I don't know, like anybody could go ahead and put together a recipe for an IPA since we were talking about that earlier, but we know why we're using the types of hops that we're using. We know the, the, the ingredients that will go into it, the, the grains, the hops, the yeast, I mean, everything from start to finish, like how we'd want to, why we'd want to put in the ingredients the way that we do, how we would utilize them in order to get the flavors that we want. So there's a, that feel that goes into it. Like when it comes, when it becomes art, that's where you're moving past just the step-by-step -step instructions of, okay, step one, get your water mm -hmm. to this temperature, step two, add your grain, step three, so on and so forth to where you just know. Yeah. I mean, you don't see musicians, I go back to the music analogy. Yeah. I mean, you don't see musicians standing up there with like sheets of music, like up on the stand in front of them while they're, you know, out at a concert. Like they just, they just know at that well, point. It's kind of crazy because I, I actually uh, thank you so much, Mike, for the, the question, because I love this topic. I treat, you know, I, I have a, a graphic arts background. It's kind of where my, you know, footprint started in the career world. And you know, I joke all the time. I got into graphic arts, but I can't draw <laughs> and I can't, you know, and I'm not artsy. And honestly, beer brewing is the, my best way. First off, I, I find it therapeutic to brew. But uh, mm -hmm. secondly, it's a way I get to express myself. And I ha I feel very artsy. You know, I find most homebrewers typically play instruments. Um, 
there's a lot of common variables in home brewers that I found over the years. You know, I That's played guitar for years. I was in a band, you know, I've got a bunch of tattoos, you know, the, the list goes on. You see a lot of common variables, but, um, for me, like I love home brewing because it, it truly feels like art to me in a way I can express myself for someone who can't draw a lick. And, mm-hmm. you know, I played guitar for years and tried to write my own music and, Oh my gosh, they were terrible. <laughs> um, uh, but you know, I had fun doing it and the same thing with home brewing, you know, I, and I have a blast doing it. And mm-hmm. I guess that would be my next thing. I know you got to be somewhere, Chris is, you know, when I decided to do this, I actually talked to somebody. He was going to be on the cast today. Unfortunately, he's having internet issues today. So we'll, he'll stay a mystery for now, but I voiced him and said, Hey, here's what I want to do. Do you want to help me out with it? And he was like, Oh, absolutely. And it's because he, like I said, I don't, I don't know if he wants to be re- remain anonymous at this point, but um, you know he's different than me. I'm always trying different shit in the store. I push the envelope of home brewing back to the art thing of it. Uh, I try different yeast. I mashed a beer not too long ago for thirty minutes. I do lagers at ale temperatures. You know, I do. I'm always yeah. trying different stuff, and in ways I feel like it's probably hurt my overall end product because I'm really not trying to make award winning beers. Sure. So that would do my customers an injustice by saying, oh, I brewed this, you know, I brewed a Vienna lager I mashed for 30 minutes and boiled for like 10 and fermented at 62 degrees. So, I mean, and Whoa. it was fantastic. And the person I'm talking about brewed a Vienna lager. We tried our side by side. Our recipes were slightly different back to we didn't even have inspiration and totally different things. And our beers drank very similar. Huh. But he takes the care to really go and, and everywhere he goes, he wins awards for his beer. So I'm like, this is the person I want to collaborate with to help me get going because I need someone who's got his foot on the ground of making award winning killer beer. Yeah. Um, because unfortunately back to, I'm a home brew store first. That's not really where my head's at because back to, I, I'm not trying to make the next recipe that, that does whatever I want to push the art and the envelope of what we can do with brewing, not to be a smart ass about it, but to, yeah. Why do we mash for 60 minutes? I don't know. Why do we boil for 60 minutes? I, I mean, I do know the answer to these questions, but right, but, but can you make a good beer breaking every home brewing rule? Um, obviously, you need your basic sanitation and things like that, but my but point is I feel, I feel it's hindered probably my overall finished product because of that because mm-hmm. um, I am always trying weird stuff, new yeasts, new practices, new ingredients. I just brewed a, you know, a, an IPA with three hop varieties I've never used ever. And so, you know, for me to give people when they want to come in and tweak recipes, it's like, how do I help you out? If, if I'm not constantly trying different things, I'm not just trying to stay in this mold of perfection. Mm -hmm. I, 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 my brewing's all over the darn place, um, yeah. and I'm always. Tr- in fact, I'm always trying new equipment. I'm um, so I probably don't brew on the same thing more than twice. I don't. Uh, for me to brew and put together recipes, probably like I said, would would be an injustice to customers because <laughs> <laughs> I'm so scatterbrained with every or not scatterbrained, but I'm always trying so many different things. It, yeah, it, it, it wasn't my. It wasn't in my best interest. Hey Joey, um, what should I put in this stout? Uh, Azaka. Yeah, put put that in there. Like yeah. try that. Yeah. Well, it's like right now I've barely got any left. I've been trying to watch my calories. Been trying to you know keep things down. I'm super into stouts. It took me seven years to get burnt out on IPAs, but I'm super into stouts right now. Yeah. And I love sweet stouts. I'm still not a dry stout guy. I love sweet stouts. Yeah. And you know, but a lot of people can't lactoses and all kinds of sweet stouts. Yeah. A lot of people lactose intolerant. So I brewed. Uh, I took a sweet stout recipe mm-hmm. and I. Got rid of the lactose and I added vanilla flavoring at okay. caking. So you get the perceived sweetness from the vanilla. It mm-hmm. drinks like a sweet stout, but you're not getting the calories from the lactose. And if someone's lactose intolerant, this would be a good way to say, hey, I want to brew a sweet stout, but I'm lactose intolerant. Okay. I've got a recipe that should help you out. Yeah. But if I enter this into a home brewing competition, oh, oh you got to the hell. <laughs> They'd slaughter me. Yeah, 20.6. Here you go. But it's still a good beer, you know, so, you know, I guess in conclusion, you know, like I said, so, so I, I, I very, uh, you know, Butch had intention of like, well, if we're going to do this and we're going to offer recipes, I need someone who is known for brewing really, really, really killer beers to help me out a little bit yeah. along this journey. Because, you know, like I said, it would be an injustice to people if I just was like, oh, hey, try this, you know, you're going to do 
if you want to follow me, you're going to do a complete 180 next time you brew this yeah, recipe yeah. because, like I said, I don't have a – right now, at being a home brew store, I'm always trying new things. Yeah, and I think that's – well, that's, that's, a, the fun, that's the fun for me. Yeah, and I think yeah. it should be. I mean, I, what, what sense would it make for you to continue – I mean, again, home brew store first – so you get new equipment and people come in to buy it and you're like, well, I don't know how to use it. I'm still using the same setup that I've been using, you know, since I started yeah. brewing and all this other stuff. And it's like, that wouldn't, that wouldn't be of any use to people. Yeah. It, it's just, I think it's just as important to continue to branch out, to continue to, I guess, again, like you, like you said earlier, to push that envelope at just mm -hmm. as important as to, again, to dig into the process and to make sure that you can, understand and repeat back to folks that, okay, this is why we do the things that we do. If you're looking to either hit those award-winning beers, or even if you just want to have, I don't know, a, a clear beer that has do no off flavors that you can drink on a summer afternoon, you need to understand that process. Mm -hmm. And I think being able to do what you're planning on doing, what you're pushing doing right now will give both yourself and Anybody that comes into HBYOB, that ability to do. All right. So we're coming up on 40 minutes. Uh, I mean, I guess it's about time to wrap up. I mean, do you have anything else for the folks before we get on out of here? I honestly don't. Like I said, honestly, any way you guys can support uh, us there at the shop, I greatly appreciate it. Like I said, we're going on three years. I, I can't thank you enough for, for supporting me this far. And hopefully in the future, you'll keep supporting me. Um, it's it's been great. Um, there's nothing I enjoy more than having the store right now and being able to help people out with home brewing. So, like I said, I can't thank you all enough. Yeah, absolutely, man. And uh, for folks that don't know, I mean, go like head on down to HBYOB. What's the address again? One twenty three North Springboro Pike. Yeah, just go down to the Dayton Mall. Uh, get right off the exit right there off of uh, six seventy five or seventy five. Can't miss it. Uh, so if you ever get on down there, definitely go and check out, check out the store, check out the equipment, get some, do you still have the carry out there as of, as of right now? So that is the thing. Once we do get a, our manufacturing permit, we will no longer be able to do carry out. We can't carry both permits gotcha. at the same time, but we are operating under our current carry out permit until we get issued our brewery permit. Excellent. All right. So while you guys have the chance, get on down there and pick up some beer because you had a, like a pretty decent selection uh, the last time I was down. Yeah. Uh, everything yeah. from what? 52 West all the way down to what? Natty Light and or what? King Cobra? Cole 45. Get it right. Oh, hey. <laughs> I got Stroh's right now. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, we'll start to dwindle down. Like I said, the closer we get, the closer we get. I'm hoping... Um, we will be having beer for y'all to sample by 2020. Okay. Um, by the, cool. by January of 2020, that is my goal. That's what I've been told should be feasible. So like I said, I will keep you guys in the loop and I'll keep you updated. Absolutely, man. I love, love to hear it. Love to hear it. All right. So for Joey, I am Chris. You can catch Joey down at the store, HBYOB. We thank you, everybody, for tuning in tonight, and uh, hopefully we'll be getting some, getting some update out to you guys soon. Catch y'all later. Cheers.